Let's begin this acrylic painting. I normally use, um, it's Indian yellow, ultramarine blue, and alizarin crimson, and titanium white. I use a golden brand, but you know, you can use any brand that you like. If you are using um, the student quality grade, acrylics you might need to do several layers the advantage with professional like the uh, golden heavy body and others is that you have a better pigment but in any case let's begin so i just did a very um, light wash just with the uh, red and the blue and as you can see it's, it's almost like if you were doing um, almost like um, watercolor. So the first thing that I want you to do is just to, to sort of mark like, like a line. It's just slightly above the middle. And we're gonna make a dark shade here. Again, it's a very light wash. But all of this you just do. And as you can see, it's almost uh, also a third of the canvas on the left. This is an eight by 10 and you can do whatever size you want. I'm just giving you sort of the proportions. And uh, we're gonna do this uh, light wash, as you can see, probably a little darker, a little more blue. So more blue uh, in the bottom, very light. And then we move on to making a line here. And you know, you're making this your own painting, so your line can be thicker or smaller than mine. And then we can do another dark area here. This dark area is gonna go in this way, almost here. And then you're gonna make a line here. This line is helpful for us. We're gonna make this dark and dark here. I mean, it's not really very dark because as I mentioned, it's a very light wash. And what we're painting is a scene in a canal in Amsterdam. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Sentiberg. This is where my sister goes every year and I had the opportunity to spend with her some time in Amsterdam. So in this line, okay, you're gonna make this height here more or less the same as this. So this distance and this distance more or less the same, this distance and this distance more or less the same, okay? Um, so we're gonna make a light, light, bluer tint or bluer shade. Oh, it's not very light. So to make it lighter, uh, you can use water. These are acrylics and they are actually with water. And then what I'm gonna do is use a little bit more of the red. You don't, you barely can see it in, in the tip of my brush, um, but just very light on this top here with this very light red. And again, you can make this, uh, you make this your own painting. Okay, and there we go. So basically we've got a start. Now we're gonna make a little bit of a darker. Um, it, again, it's blue and red, and I'm just mixing it. I cannot actually show you easier the the palette but you can see that it um, it's a very dark it's really purple because it's blue and red um, it looks almost uh, black so now we're gonna make this sort of movement here like this and we're gonna make this here and then we're gonna put some dark areas in here okay so far, I hope you're following uh, okay. If not, you can always stop, pause, and take some time. So I'm sort of making general lines. It's, um, 
just an idea of what we are putting in there. Just follow more or less what I am doing. If your lines have different um, proportions, that's fine. You're painting, even if I did the same painting twice, it does never look the same, uh, at least in, in my own hands. Uh, it's always a different painting. So your painting is gonna look different than mine. That's okay, it's your own painting, okay? So we make this a little bit darker, and again, uh, we're gonna re-establish this dark line. Now I have less water. You can, you can actually see how it is covering a bit better. Um, you can use any kind of brush. I like uh, these brushes. They are, I'm sorry that I don't think you can read it well, but they are called Royal and Langnickel. I don't know if it's pronounced that way. And I like these for, because they, they do hold the size and they have a, a nice chiseled edge. Uh, but you need to take care of your uh, brushes. And so far I've used the same brush all the time. It's sort of the same mix so far. And uh, I will let you know when I'm cleaning the brush at some point. Um, I often use the same brush sometimes for the whole painting, especially when it's a quick painting like this one. I don't have too much time to, to, to tape because I think my taping has a limit. I think everybody's. Okay, St establish this dark line again, go down and uh, a little bit down here just a little bit not too much now i want you to put like a uh, it looks like a rhomboid um and you just bring it down that's going to be a little boat and that's the way you just do like i did a little smudge in there all right so we're going to get now into some of the greens to do the green i'm going to use the same sort of a smudge that I have already created which which is dark and I'm going to add some of the Indian yellow. Now the Indian yellow is a transparent color and because it's transparent it may actually be um, you may need to put a little bit more if you have any other kind of yellow especially if it's a cadmium yellow uh, you don't need to put to put too much because cadmium is not transparent. So by adding the yellow to the purple that I had, I'm getting like a dark green color here, and I'm just adding it here. These are gonna be bushes. Uh, actually, they are very tall trees. I don't know why I call them bushes. And I'll tell you the name of the canal is gonna be in the title of this video, and I'll also put it in the, in the bottom. So it's, it's not really green green, but it's now starting to get into uh, a little bit more of a color. And we're gonna do again uh, the same here, probably adding a bit more yellow. You can see I put the yellow directly in here and you see how it gets like, it's really overwhelmed by the other colors. Uh, again, you know, Indian yellow, it's very transparent, but that's the beauty I like w using a lot of transparent colors because then the layers that you're putting below, they actually show. And the other thing I like about using the transparency of these colors, and I didn't know that when I started painting, was uh, that the um, there's like a, there's more luminescence to the painting. So now I started using the transparency of these colors better. All right. So now that we've established, if, I hope you can see, this is gonna be like the canal wall. Uh, there's gonna be a little plank in here, and this is the other side of the canal. And we're gonna have here trees and trees and the reflection of the trees. So if you are with me so far, you should have pretty much something that looks similar. This is the railing of the bridge. Uh, it probably is not needed, but I, I often like to have something close to the eyes that's gonna be a little darker instead of just having the water here, but you can choose to do it or not. All right, so we are ready to wipe this. This is super important. Have your paper towels ready. 
and have your water. So when you take away the paint, and you know, at first I didn't like doing that because I felt I was wasting paint. I didn't want to waste paint. But honestly, it's not that much, but it's very significant. So you keep your brushes in better shape. And then once you take most of the paint with the rag, you then clean it in the water bucket that you should have ready by your side. And then when you are wiping it after you cleaned it or you dump it into the water, it gets cleaner. It's not completely clean. At the end of each session, it takes a lot of time to clean your brushes, but please do that. Well, it's, it's up to you, of course, but um, brushes are ruined with acrylic paint. It's plastic, so once it dries, if you did not clean it with soapy water and clean it very well, including the, the bottom of these, of the hairs, you ruin your, your brushes. Brushes are not necessarily expensive and it just depends how much time you want to spend in cleaning it. I got a new rag, a clean rag. Now we are going to start introducing the uh, lighter colors and those required to have white. Titanium white is a very strong uh, opaque color and so I don't like to introduce it very early on. I prefer to start usually with, as you saw, with my, <clears throat> with my transparent colors. So it is convenient to keep a place in your palette for mixtures where you keep the white away there's a very good uh, tutor on YouTube. Her name is Sarah Sedgwick. She does oils. And uh, she mentioned something I really liked. I liked cooking too. She said adding uh, white is like adding salt to your food. Once you add it, you, you cannot take it out. So with white is the same thing in acrylics and in, um, in oils. All right, so we're going to have a mixture of white and we're gonna start with a little bit of blue. So you can see a lot of white and a little bit of blue. And you should be getting a blue that almost looks white, but it's not white. It's light blue. To that light blue, I like to add a little bit of the mix I had before. So it's not a completely blue blue. Uh, you can add just a tiny bit. So by adding the mix that I had used for this area with the yellow and a little bit of red, it's become a little bit like a turquoise blue. And that's what I like to use instead of completely white white. It does look a bit more um, probably looks a bit more green than I expected. So I will be adding a bit more blue, a bit more white, and just making it a nicer, nicer light blue color. There we go. Okay. Now we are, I was, I'm not sure if I'm going to put some clouds or not. Let's, let's deal with the nice blue color of the sky. Now, what I did is I am actually reestablishing the blue. It is usually bluer on the top than it is on the bottom. And if you still have a little bit of a, if you do it fast, you can blend these colors and we will be making it even lighter in the bottom. But at least it's, it's a nice blue. Now, take a look at what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be establishing the tops of the trees by just, um, adding the, the blue sky. Oh, I don't think I mixed it very well. Okay, no problem. Good thing with acrylics is you can fix everything that you painted. If you don't like it, you can fix it. So if you see, I'm making the treetops with the blue of the sky, okay? And it's nothing fancy. It's just by doing this, I am establishing these trees which were sort of Kind of very square trees and then there was a a little bit of a more division between this tree here
and the, the other tree here in the back. Okay, so by doing this, we establish sort of the line that starts looking like the tree tops. And then we've got this one here, which is one in the back. And yeah, they're like, um, I think they're evergreens. They look like pines. I'm not sure. And then these ones here in the back are much less defined. Anyway, we take a little bit more of our blue, the same kind of light blue that we had. I mean, it's predominantly blue, but there's a little bit of yellow and red with a lot of white. The reason why you do that is because in real life, colors are not exactly blue or red. And if you do that, there's nothing wrong with that. You can definitely do it. But if you do that, your painting's gonna look more like a, like a cartoon. There's nothing wrong with cartoons. They're actually very nice and they depict what, what you like to depict. So if that's what you want to do, then, then you know that you need to use more pure colors. Um, if you want it to look more like in real life, then don't don't use the, the blue or the red or the yellow on their own. And um, just try to make sure that you are using them in, in a way that um, it's a little bit combined with other colors as it is in, in real life. All right, so this is looking a bit weird, but um, there are trees and... Uh, Try not to make them look all the same and we'll see how this goes. So we're making the treetops um, look, we're creating them from what is called negative painting. So by painting the sky, we are actually creating the impression of trees or treetops and the lighter they are, that's why I told you to put a light red wash in there. The lighter they are, the far away they look like. So right now you should have something in your own style uh, that looks more, more or less like this. And if you realize, I mean, I, like I mentioned to you, I mean, with a perspective, it goes like, you know, smaller in the, in the back. And then there was something in the, in the back here too, but not very well defined. Okay, so you should have something similar to what I have. And you can see that it's not all the same color. It's actually nice to have some variety and variegation and so on. Um, some people actually also use their fingers. These acrylics are non-toxic. So that's okay to use your fingers if you want to open up a little bit of that sky hole there. Just make sure that the, lar the darker ones are on top or in front of the lighter ones. So it wouldn't make sense to have a hole that looks through uh, in the darker ones. Whereas these ones that are in, in, the, in the farther area, they, you can see the sky through the trees. So that's, that's why it's a negative painting uh, or people also call it painting uh, the sky holes. I hope you're with me so far. You can pause this at any time and uh, you can just you know, take your time in, in creating your own painting. Now, this is pretty much, I don't wanna touch this too much more. Maybe I'll do a little bit here, but I'm not sure. I might not touch it that much. Okay, so now for the water. The blue of the water has a little bit more of Indian yellow. If you do not have Indian yellow, uh, you can use um, phthalo green if you have it, or if you use cadmium yellow, which sometimes is a very, very strong yellow, um, it makes it look much greener. You might need to use a tiny touch of red just to make it look better. And you should have some sort of a turquoise color of the, for, for the water. And it's, it's really not, not very dark, although it does look dark, but it's not really very dark. So we're gonna start here, as you can see um, in, in this area. And this is a straight line in here. 
because this is a railing. Of course, we can reestablish it later. I think I want to put a little bit more blue in my palette. This looked very blue, but when I paint, it could be the light, but it doesn't look very blue. So now you start using this kind of horizontal. I'm using these um, ang angled um, brushes. You can use any kind of brush. It's just a matter of knowing how to use it. If I use it this way, it gives me um, sort of more of the idea of, of water, um, but you can use it any, any way. Uh, you can use it broad, you can use it small. Some people like to use tiny brushes. This is a rather large brush for the size of the canvas, if you can see. But um, I like to use the larger brush I can. I am just making a little bit more lighter color. And as you can see, it's not all necessarily um, how do you call it? Um, mixed. I have some pieces of white, some pieces, I didn't mix it and it's on purpose. So in here where, where we have the dark plank, it's nice to have where the plank is, it should be straight because that's a construction. But where the reflection is, you can actually get it in there. It's a bit difficult for me to do it this way because the camera is, I tried to put it right in front of the painting. So that means that I have to try to paint by um, squeezing on the side of the camera. And I just made a mess in my palette. So Sorry about that interruption. Um, all right, so we'll just um, go on doing this kind of brush strokes and we are going to get it a little lighter as we go in the back. So again, the lighter uh, area is gonna be with titanium white. If you have any other kind of white, uh, if it's very transparent, you may need to use a lot more white than, than, than you need with the titanium white. But titanium white really covers very well. So you start doing this and we are going to notice that right here there should be an area where we have water because the reflection of that area should come down so it should mimic what we put in the in the top and that way we can get the impression this is reflecting on what's above so just try to make sure that it's in a vertical line and here we need to make sure too that this is a vertical impression of that other tree. Okay, now I think I did too much here, so you can always wipe it out. As we get closer to the boat, it's actually nice to be able, maybe I should use a smaller brush, but anyway, sometimes I like to show that I can do just one brush. So the back of the water is usually lighter than the front. We may go back and re-establish that very light area. And water, normally when you paint reflections of the water, it's vertical lines. Uh, and when you paint, um, oh, I made a mistake. Uh, there should have been a reflection there. So what we'll do, I think it's easier. Why don't we just eat into this tree and just make it so that the reflection makes sense. That's what you can do.
So you can fix it if you didn't make the mistake I made, um, then you don't need to fix it. Okay, so now we go. The reflections of the water usually um, we paint down and for the waves of the water we paint horizontal. And that gives the impression of both reflections when you paint down and the horizontal strokes is the water movement. Now, close to this boat, it's really nice to have it uh, in the lighter color that I had created because the boat is gonna be really dark. So that sort of a combination of the, the dark boat surrounded by light color or lighter color of the, of the water that has more white um, will give it a nice touch. Again, I don't really use white alone as my recommendation. Uh, don't use white alone. And now uh, we are just creating this reflection of the boat. So one of them, one is a reflection of the boat. And as you can see, sometimes I push harder on this and sometimes I push less. And for the, again, negative painting of the boat, you go around the, the boat and paint it. I hope that you are closer to your canvas than I am and you can do this uh, with more precision because it could be frustrating for you. Um, it could be frustrating for me, uh, but as I thought, it's nicer if you can see this. Um, now, as you can see, I'm using a very tiny touch so to, to create that reflection of the boat coming and there we go. So I think we are in good shape. Um, now what we need to bring is some lights, okay? Now um, the water, again, it's um, just horizontal strokes for the waves. And as I already had this paint, well, I just use it to make some horizontal. Um, very light touch. Um, you can do some, can you see how by doing this, it also gives the impression of water. Um, and, you know, you can do it here too. But I think for the rest is okay. Let's uh, clean our brush. Again, just pull out all of that white stuff and you use I have several buckets containers with uh, clean water some people use a very large bucket I've seen that done I'm used to having several ones because one of them has the darker uh, water and you see it cleans pretty well so I continue using this same big brush uh, I can also change to a smaller brush. Now we're going to establish some blacks or dark colors again uh, on top of what we had before. So this is a dark, it's blue and red. And sometimes I don't necessarily like to uh, establish it very, very, um, mix it well so that when you do your strokes, uh, they may actually be showing as different strokes. So we had this particular reflection. And then we have here a plank. It's gonna look like a plank pretty soon. And this plank goes this way. Now it's gonna be in perspective. So because it's in perspective, we are going to have it slightly out. Okay, so that's the plank that we will have there and its reflection um, that I had originally established by just going down, remember? So if you just go down, you get the reflection and, and you can see that I'm not covering the whole thing. Okay, 
these are all also reflections and this is gonna be a dark area that we're gonna paint later on okay I think this is also a dark area just finish it as, as you can see um, I'm not going on details I don't think I would be able to paint with many details in in a very short time I do have a trend of getting into details and I think the idea of painters is that the the more spontaneous and the less details the nicer the painting I think that super realistic is wonderful too but it's a lot more difficult at least that for me so I just prefer to establish my colors this way okay all right, so there's dark here, dark in, in both areas. These anchors, what's closer to us from what's farther away, I hope you can see it, that it's like a misty, you know, image in, in the back. So we're going to start getting into some combination of the lights and the darks. In my palette, I have the lights I had created, the, the light sort of blue-greenish that I had created for the sky and for the, um, and for the water. And what I'm doing is I'm just mixing it with the darks that I just had. So it is coming out, I do it with like a palette knife, it's coming out like a nice, I would say, uh, purple. I mean, it's... Um, it does have yellow because I had yellow in there, but the predominant color seems to be more like a purple color. Okay, now I want it to be a little bit bluer, darker blue. I mean, not dark blue, but darker. So more like a violet instead of a purple. So it's more like towards the blue than towards the red. Um, I think some painters call these uh, pousse, uh, which comes from the French, which uh, means flea. And uh, it's, I think in English they say puce, but it's from the French. And it does mean please. Okay, so I had my dark color in the brush. So wipe it out, but because I'm using some of that mixture into my puce, <laughs> puce, um, I don't need to wash it with water. Okay, so this is gonna be tricky for me because I'm in an angle, but we're gonna start painting the front of that particular plank, okay? So we're seeing it straight up with an angle. Then another mark that you're gonna do here is a little mark like this and another mark like this. It will make sense soon. And then we're gonna make another mark like this. And this particular mark we're going to bring down for our reflection. These are going to be bones, I think. <laughs> I think you will agree with me that they will be bones. In my imagination, they are bones. Okay, so now I'm adding a little bit of white um, to that same color. Uh, with a little bit more of the blue. These, these boats are in shadow, most of them, or most of the image. So we're gonna make this a sort of a, a wider boat here. And this is the front of the boat that comes like this, like a smiling, smiling boat, okay. And this one here, it's on this end that also has that little bit of a 
and their reflection. Now, for this area in the middle is where it receives a little bit of light. So to that particular water, the color of water, I'm going to add some Indian yellow. Again, it's very transparent. So I hope it doesn't look too much green. Maybe I'll add a little bit of clean Indian yellow to white. Indian yellow, I like it. See, it's really bright. I, I like it. I hope it's not too much. Okay, so now I need to chisel my brush. Make sure that I have a pointy chiseled edge. These are not expensive brushes. It's just a matter that you clean them. So that's why I said do not let them dry with acrylic because they get ruined. Okay, we get a little bit more of this reflection of the light. Apparently the light was coming. I think it's coming through the front because when my sister took this photo, uh, I think the light is really like it's middle of the day so it's coming from the top okay so we need to add a little bit more of a shade or a shadow shape on the side it's just a tiny bit so i'm really just using all the colors i have on my palette sort of mixing them just to get a dirty they call it mud um people who know how to paint um, and it's really a sort of a dirty, dirty color, but I just need a little bit of color here for this particular boat and here, so it's not that dark in this particular case. I think that should give a good impression of boats. I might come back and put them, make them a little bit bluer. I think it's not a bad idea. Now this is a small painting and I'm using a very large brush. Believe it or not, by my side, I have smaller brushes. I have no idea why I'm, I'm reluctant. I think I wanted to show you how you could paint with only one brush and I hope it's a good idea. I hope you are enjoying as much as I am. I don't even know how much time I've been spending. Okay, I'm gonna make a, a light blue um, because I, I think it might actually be better. Not, it's not very light actually. It's not as light as as the water, but um, I think this would look better in sort of a. It was too light. Okay, good thing about acrylics is that you can always fix. Yeah, I just wanted to make the shadow here more of a blue shadow rather than the purple I had. I think it just would look better. And this boat is looking at us straight forward. Same here, a little bit of a blue shade. And here, actually, we can make some dappled lights on the plank. Okay, so now uh, what else do we need? These railings, actually, now that we have the blue, uh, these railings had some slits where you could see the water. They're like diagonal. Um, you can make them vertical if you want to, or you can actually make railings, actually. No, that's wrong because you shouldn't be seeing the water there. So we are going to take that out. And to do that, 
and just in case you're wondering, my accent is Spanish. Okay, yeah, it's just a rag with a little bit of water. Beauty of painting with, with acrylics. In uh, oils, you would just do the same with your um, diluent, whatever you're using. All right, now we're going to make a little bit of a darker area. Um, and I think that in the YouTube channel, if, if this comes out fine, then it means I'm talking to you. And if you're watching it and you're still watching it, um, what I'm going to do is put the final painting. But if you're painting with me without seeing the final painting, you may not know what it is. I'm going to make a dark area here. Okay, just cover this with it's a darker area because it's on top of the previous layer. It actually doesn't look bad at all. It looks now less transparent and we do a darker area here too. Okay, so these two dark areas and then this is a dark area also. Okay, and the dark area again is the red and blue. There's a bit more predominant red. In this one all right now with this dark area I just want to reinforce the bottom of the side let's say the side of the canal street or whatever it is should be darker there's always darker and again the reflections go down okay all right we're gonna go back to the Indian yellow and white so I need to wash because this has dark so I need to make sure that I wash it uh, so that my Indian yellow and white are not going to be contaminated with a very dark color and as you can see it's just wiping it out and then I just put it in first the dirty water and then the one that's a little bit cleaner so I have a bucket of um, darker water because that's where I was cleaning after darks and lighter water it's still dirty but it's where I'm cleaning with the light colors you can have many more buckets of water uh, there's never too many when you paint with acrylics so a big blob of white and a chunk of white of yellow Indian yellow and like I said this is a very nice combination I sometimes don't like to mix it all. I think I've said it several times. So you got the point. Um, with a pointy chiseled edge, and now you need to have a steady hand. I hope I don't bang on the, on the camera. We're gonna start by adding this area of light here. And as you get closer, it is wider. Um, whew, okay, and that's kind of the uh, edge of the bank. I'm going to finally use another brush, just with water, because I think this was too much. So I'm gonna just shave off the the top. It's not completely shaved, but just make it, um, oops, messed, messed it up. Okay, so with a clean brush, just get it out. I sort of like the transparency of those trees. You can make them darker. I mean, that's really um, an option for you. If you like them darker, you can just make them darker. I'm just going to put a little bit of the transparent red here because I think I lifted, lifted it without noticing. All right. Like I said, I use transparent colors. I think I've said it many, many times. If you're not using transparent colors, you may not have had this particular 
challenge when fixing. I think it's actually good that you see me that I had to fix something because it's always helpful to know that, you know, we don't always get things exactly right the first time. All right. Okay. All right, so now for the, I promised you we're going to use that um, color that was the yellow and the white. Okay, so yellow and white. What we are going to do here is just put some dabs of yellow and white, not too much. And on top of the railing, the railing is getting the light. So the top of the railing gets this color and oh, let me see if I can do it um, a little bit on the bottom of this rail. I think my hand is shaking. I don't know if you can see it. It's because I'm actually far from the painting, but if you're painting closer, you might be able to not shake. <laughs> oh boy. It's funny to make these videos. I don't know why we take the trouble. Um, I mean, I do it for, if even if there's one person watching who's not my sister, is the only one who watches my videos so far, um, then it's worth the effort. All right, okay. So now what we are going to do is a sort of a pinkish color. So we're going to take um, the alizarin crimson and mix it with what we had with the Indian yellow. So it's kind of a salmon color that comes out, uh, the same yellow that we had. Um, if you can see, this is kind of a light pinkish color and we're going to be using that pinkish color in, in some areas here just a, a little bit just a few uh, these are going to be a couple of they were like um, terracotta flower beds that they put very nicely in Amsterdam in the on the railings in the canal so do this th same thing. Um, as you can see, I'm just dabbing. If you have a smaller brush, that's actually probably a better idea. Uh, don't don't dab too much. Just just a few, and uh, just pay attention to where I'm putting these dabs of color. So they're not everywhere. Just in a few areas. Okay. So this area of the planter is in the dark and this area of the planter is in the dark so these were probably a bit too light so now i'm going to add a bit more of these um, areas of these lighter colors on, on these flower beds uh, planters they're not flower beds and uh you know a few in here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of the blue with that uh, pinkish color that I had um, and it's making it uh, this, this kind of a light blue color, muddy blue and that muddy blue is going to go in here because these are in the shade, okay? So these are not going to be very light. And some of these also, we're going to put some of these here. Um, some of them are going to look more than others, or you're going to be able to see them more than others. That's basically it for the light blue. And then they had some white flowers, but you know, white flowers are never, never, never white, white. So we are going to use a light uh, color that's almost white, but it really has a bit of the other three colors. You can see it's more predominantly probably 
um, the yellow, but I did use a little bit of the other colors. And we're gonna put those in specific areas, basically where the light is hitting this planter. Yeah, I think I called it planter. Um, okay, so we're gonna put these lights here and some lights also in this area. It's actually nice if you leave sort of a demarcation where the lights are and where the darks are. It gives more of the impression of this particular um, volume or form. Okay, so now for the special touch, I did tell you my colors, but what I didn't mention is that I'm using just for this final step, cadmium red. Cadmium red is super, super nice, but it's like a, an accent color. Um, if you were using cadmium red instead of the alizarin crimson that I was using, then uh, you can go ahead and use it. But the beauty of using the cadmium red, look at what different it is from the alizarin crimson. So by adding this cadmium red in some of these flowers is really, um, I think it just brings a very nice accent to the flower. I said planters, right? It's not flower beds, it's planters. Um, and it's just, you know, you can just flick it and we can go back and forth. We can make some of them sort of pop out and brings it closer when you just do it on top of the dark. And here on this end, I mentioned that I wanted to make sure that it looks like uh, we're having like a line that demarcates where it's in light and where it's in shadow. So that's one thing I, I like about having the dark colors and then adding these bright light colors on top of the darks. Okay, now the other color that I have saved is uh, uh, Hansa Yellow. I'm using all of these are golden, is the brand that I use. This was the cadmium, cadmium right, um, red light. And this is the uh, cadmium yellow light that I'm using. So cadmiums are very nice opaque colors. So we're going to add some touches of yellow in here. And on the other end, uh, this is really it's your painting, so if you want to do other color flowers, just make sure your final accents come at the very end. As you saw, this was like a very dark area before, so you know, don't rush into doing it. And uh, I'm it's actually mixing a little bit between the two of them, but I, I want to make sure that it shows there's light uh, on the top of these flower beds. And now with that same cadmium yellow, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue because, you know, obviously there are some leaves uh, in there. And for the leaves, uh, I didn't paint any, so it's always good to have a little bit of green showing up. And this green came out a little dark, so that's actually good. Um, I'm putting it on the on the dark end and then I'm gonna make it lighter with a bit more cadmium yellow for the lighter areas not too much but green against red is just gorgeous um, well obviously it's all a matter of um, taste but it just makes a very nice contrast and of course, you know, planters have leaves, flowers have leaves. 
and if the flowers are on planters, then the planters have to have leaves. Okay. I think we're almost done, if not done. Um, there's only one final thing I want to do. I think I made a little bit of a smudge in here, so I still have some of the dark color. What I'll do is establish some darks in between the lights. That way, the lights pop out better. Um, it's all relative in painting, I guess, in life. Um, you know, things look brighter when you've had a year like we have had. Today is the 31st of December of 2020, um, the, the year of the COVID pandemia. Not sure when you might be watching this, but I'm celebrating the end of this very challenging year with a painting for all of you. Yeah, you see the darks actually helped establish again the, the bright lights of the flowers. Okay, I think this painting is almost done. Uh, coming along, it's just I promised I was gonna do a little bit of a highlight and I have uh, this big brush that I had before and what I'm gonna use is the Indian yellow. So again, the, the cadmiums, I only use them, it's probably because I like. You, if you don't have colors, you can just buy, honestly, when I travel, I just travel with a lizard crimson, Indian yellow, and ultramarine blue, and titanium white, just four colors, and that's how I make paintings when I travel. Okay, this is a bright accent that I think it's needed in, in the top, I think there are some areas where it might benefit from having sort of in here, I'm going to create a light edge. And then sort of dappled light from the trees on the top. I think it may look okay. I think I should have used the other brush, but we can fix it. We can fix it because I went too low and I, I think it still needs like a, a bright spot here. And now I will place a spot of this light color on here. I have the other brush that has the darker colors. Okay, and with the darker colors, what I am going to do is to fix that. Um, and darker, I mean uh, ultramarine blue, a lizard and crimson. If you, if you add all three, it's also good. But the darker ones are gonna be a lizard and crimson and ultramarine blue because I think this plank lost its shape. There we go. Now it's got the shape again. And I think uh, these this boat had this sort of a just shaping it a little bit better by painting around it with a dark color. I think I did too much, so I need to reestablish it. 
and this little boat. I think the little boat is, is better than the big boat. <laughs> I'm all um, bent over <laughs> because it's not really very easy to paint this way, but uh, it's good. It's good. No problem. No problem. Not complaining. And I think, oh, I think actually it doesn't look that bad to have this boat in the, in the shade. Maybe just a little tiny touch of light, like, you know, it's um, through the leaves or something. It might be creating some light here and light here and this one here. All right. I think it's done. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Oh, there's one more thing that I forgot. Um, and it's not its not the signature. I'm not going to show you how to sign. You can sign whatever you want. I'm just making a, a lighter purple color. It does look purple. But it's just it's because I think uh, this has to be lighter. It's good to be dark because it's going to be against the... Against the light, but I think I changed the shape in the wrong way. Again, we're gonna fix that by painting around it. Okay, it's like the back of the And you can work on the water as much as you want. And also a little bit of this yellowish color on the sky in the bottom. Like you see, I'm sort of, they say kissing the canvas. I don't know. If... Anyway, it's a light touch. I don't know if it's the right way to say it. There's different kinds of kissing. Um, so lighter on the horizon is always um, a good impression of depth and atmospheric sensation so it's just very very light touch with that sort of a yellowy light uh, we are done I hope you enjoyed it um, and I think it was exactly one hour so you can play this faster I hope you enjoy your Amsterdam canal painting and if you enjoyed this, please sus subscribe to my channel and recommend it, um, share it, and uh, see you next time.